I'm Haley Taylor, and you're listening to The Rough Draft Diaries. We have wrapped up all of our holiday specials, and now we're hitting the ground running with a new year of The Rough Draft Diaries. But we have to return to the previous year to pick up with our nominations. My name is Christian Howes, and I'm calling from Asheville, North Carolina. Christian was nominated by Gabe Bukowski, and maybe Gabe thought Christian would be back in Ohio as his nonprofit is actually based here. But as he mentioned earlier, Christian's calling from North Carolina. And we had a lot of ground to cover. Christian is a violinist, an educator, a producer, a composer. He studied the Suzuki method from the age of five. During his teen years, he began playing guitar and bass in rock bands. Then he switched to jazz violin. He went to New York and collaborated with artists like Les Paul, Dee Dee Jackson, Joel Harrison, and he had a four-year chair in the Bill Evans Soulgrass Band. After successful collaborations and performances and album releases, Christian wanted to return home to share all the knowledge he had acquired over the years to the next generation of musicians. So in 2014, he returned back to Ohio to create his new nonprofit. Right. So I formalized a 501c3 nonprofit organization called Creative Strings. We address it through three projects. One of those projects is online curriculum. We also do visits to schools and studios. And the third way is by putting on conferences or camps. So that's called the Creative Streams Workshop. And so those are the three ways that we try to spread this message, which is essentially empowering musicians to 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 learn about music in a way that goes beyond that sort of confined enclave of their classical training. Christian and I talked for a long time about classical music training, the pros, the cons to it. Christian mentioned his own experience learning the Suzuki method, how it helped him but almost kept him in a box. He felt he learned a lot by getting out of the classical music world, working with other musicians of different backgrounds and different cultures. Christian and I probably could have talked for hours about classical music, but I had this feeling I was missing something. You see, when Gabe recommended Christian to me, he said he was the right nominee because he has a very compelling and dramatic story. And although I love talking about classical music, I felt like I wasn't hitting on what that dramatic story was. So I simply asked Christian if it was a story he was comfortable telling. And he agreed. Well, we didn't really touch on, on the, I guess, the dramatic story that Gabe was probably referring to. But, but we did kind of, we sort of touched on when I was 16 and how I, you know, pursued in a rock band. And when I was 25, I, I sought out musicians, but there was a period in between there, 20 to 24, uh, when I was incarcerated in Ohio prisons, that was, and if you kind of think about all the different things that I've talked about during our interview, you know, I would say that those four years that I spent in Ohio prisons was that was really a time when a lot of these ideas, because obviously I collaborated with, you know, convicts and played music on the inside. I played on the prison yard. And um, so a lot of these, these ideas as an educator and a lot of the programs that we do now were influenced by that time. Gabe clarified it was a long time ago, an arrest for a drug-related charge when he was 19. I think he's kind of tired talking about it. But in the same token, this one event was so important in his life. It shaped the course of his musical career, but also the choices he would make as an educator. It was a confluence of experiences, in my experience as a classically trained violinist, and my experience as a convicted felon. Those two things colliding gave me a unique perspective. And that's what I do through the programming and through my music and through my work as a music educator and in other work I do now is try to share sort of the what I think in some ways are, like I said, it's, it's my perspective, my unique perspective on those issues. With Christian's unique history and experience, I asked him what advice he would give to any younger musicians who are also entering into the same field of work he was when he was younger. I would say that you know, especially for young men who are 15, 16, 17, 18 years old. It's important, first of all, look deep within yourself and acknowledge the things that you really feel. I think a lot of men can acknowledge anger, but they can't acknowledge hurt and they can't acknowledge fear. 
and I can only speak to that because that's what I was, was a young man. And I think it's really important to to give young men the question, you know, who do you want to be and what do you want to stand for? You know, it took me going to prison and having my back against the wall to actually start to ask those questions. What do I want? What do I want to stand for? What kind of man do I want to be? So actually, a lot of those things are, as I said, at the heart of why I'm a music educator now, why I espouse the ideas that I espouse, but it's not always explicit. It really helps me to have those things at the center of what I do, excited and fulfilled about the work that I do. I'm Haley Taylor, and thanks for listening to this episode of The Rough Draft Diaries.